Hey everybody, Chris here. Good to be back with you. Uh, certainly enjoy uh, spending time together as we look at some of these retro topics. Uh, today we're going to look at wireless networking in MS-DOS and DOS web browsing. So let's get right to it. So today, assisting us, we have a Compaq LTE 5400. Uh, the last video I did on wireless networking in Windows 3.11, I used my LTE 5380. I have just a few of these, and I really like them. They really are the ultimate DOS Windows 3.11 PCs, bar none. So, sorry Toshiba owners, I hope I didn't offend you. But anyway, I love my compacts. So anyway, let's get right to it. And what we've got here is a blank slate with MS-DOS 6.22. What I've done here on this particular hard drive is install MS-DOS and set it to have a bootable uh, MS-DOS partition. So if you're interested in how I did, did this, you can certainly look at my uh, DOS 622 Windows Workgroup 311 networking video. I go through all the different steps. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually configure our wireless drivers. And the second thing we're going to do is configure our DOS web browser, Arachne, to connect to the internet, and then we're going to be browsing in MS-DOS. It's going to be great. So, to connect to the network wirelessly, I've chosen once again this Cisco Aeronet 350 card. I found these to be really solid MS-DOS cards. So we're going to go ahead and put that into the bottom slot. That's important. It's got to be the bottom slot for ease of detection, because we're actually not going to use any sort of PC card uh, drivers uh, with this system. As you can see here, I actually don't even have a config sys set up. So that's probably the first thing we're going to do here. But uh, as such, we don't have any sort of drivers loading for our PCMTIA card solution. So, all right. So yeah, let's go ahead and set up our uh, a config sys file so that we have uh, something set up to give us as much conventional memory as possible uh, for the purposes of browsing the web. So what I'm going to do is edit config sys and I actually don't have the MS-DOS editor in the system path, so we'll go ahead and do it that way. And we're gonna set this up to load an XMS memory driver, and testing memory is slow, so we're gonna turn that off. And then we're gonna load Then we're going to load EMM386 so that we can make use of memory in the upper memory block. And we're going to tell it that we don't want to use expanded memory, but we do want to use it for purposes of the upper memory block. And there's one more thing we need to do to make our card work, and that is to exclude a certain memory region. And here's why. EMM386 is going to load. We're then going to load some packet network drivers for this card, which are going to take certain memory resources. When EMM386 loads, it's not going to detect that this card is available and using a certain region. So we need to exclude it so that that memory region is available for usage by the card. And what I found that these cards typically tend to load at address D000. So as long as we exclude this particular small region, that should be enough to allow us to set up the card. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab some wireless DOS drivers. And I've kind of cheated and I have a partition on drive D with this little installation folder where I've got my Cisco Aeronet 350 drivers. So let's make a directory on drive C and let's copy these over. All right. Very good. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and copy over the installer for the, um, the Arachne web browser as well. All right. And let's copy over the mouse driver. All right. Great. So now we've got everything copied over. So let's go ahead and configure our packet drivers so that we can uh, have connectivity. So I'm going to change into this error 350 directory. I'm going to edit cscpkt.ini to set my SSID. And to do that, I can just uncomment this line right here. 
and I've already configured my wireless router to have a network name of Retro Chris. So we're all set there. Okay. Something else we're going to be doing is web authentication. But since this line is commented out, that's indicating that the default is set to web open. So we don't need to uncomment this line. The defaults are going to be fine. And the next thing we're going to do is actually set a web key. And for our purposes, our web key is going to be all ones. So you would think that you would set the web key in here, but anybody who watched my other video would remember that we actually have to set the web key using utility. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and save this file and we can prepare to do that. First, let's go ahead and actually load our network drivers. To do that, we're gonna do CSC PKT 0x60. It's basically gonna say load packet drivers and load them at port 60. That's where the Arachne web browser is going to expect them to be. Okay, our card is loaded and we're all set to go. We can see that the port is at port 140 and IRQ is 11. We can now use the web DOS command to set the transmit key. So to do that, we're gonna do web DOS 365, since again, we're not using the PCMCIA drivers associated with this laptop, and instead relying upon the PCMCIA system to be compliant with the Intel 82365 standard. We're gonna set the port to 140, we're gonna set the IRQ to 11, though that really doesn't matter, and we're gonna set our transmit key. And in this case, we're gonna make it 26 ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Enter. All right, so now we can see that our key has been set and we're all set there. So let's get really fancy. Let's go ahead and add our packet drivers to uh, the uh, to auto exec bat so that they load automatically on startup. So to do that, we're going to say c colon backslash error 350 csc pkt 0x60. Let's also load some mouse drivers so that we have access to the mouse as well. Since when browsing, browsing DOS uh, MS, MS DOS via the web, you're going to want to have DOS drivers uh, mouse drivers. Okay. So with that, for good measure, let's go ahead and give this a three-finger salute and reboot. And when we start up, we'll be all set to install the Arachne web browser. All right, booting up here. My lovely LTE 5400. All right. Starting DOS. Loaded our packet drivers, and it failed to load. Why? Because it as it ends up, the, it could not find that INI file. So we probably need to set something up to point that. That's okay. For now, we'll just say CSC PKT 0 at 60. And we'll leave that as an exercise for the reader. The cheater thing that we could do would be to just copy that INI file one directory level back. Or if we really wanted to fix it, okay, I'll fix it. What we could do is just change into that directory and then say CSC PKT 0x60 and then we'll just change back and then from there we can load the rest. So that will do it. Helps if you spell it right. There we go. Okay, we'll be ready on next boot. But for the time being, we're all set. So let's go ahead and install that Arachne DOS web browser. And to do that, we're gonna type A197GPL which is the name of the installer. And it's gonna ask us if we want to install it. We'll say yes to the C colon backslash arachne. Perfect. And now it's going to extract. And this will actually take longer than you would expect, but it will get there. Well, that sure took a while. I'm actually very impressed that they were able to get all of those files into that 1.2 megabyte installation archive, aren't you? <laughs> all right. So before we continue on, our next step is to actually run Arachne and, and run the installer or run the initial setup procedure. I'm getting a little bit nervous. I actually want to go back and make one change and reboot the system. So we're going to go into that Air 350 directory again and edit the cscpkt.ini file and um, if I can spell it, 
And we're going to actually change this auth type open to be uncommented, just to be sure. And since we did make some changes to auto exec bat to load the drivers properly, let's just go ahead and reboot for good measure. It never hurts. All right. So the system's going to reboot here, and then hopefully uh, we'll be all set. If you don't get it right on the first try, maybe you can get it right on the second try. I guess we'll see what happens. All right. So here we are booting up. Starting MS-DOS. Hey, that looks a little better, doesn't it? All right, and our mouse driver is also installed. So let's go to the Arachne directory and run the setup program. Okay, so the first thing we get to do is choose our screen resolution and this LTE 5400 has an 800 by 600 default. And then I think we also get to choose our max resolution for some reason. We're going to choose the packet wizard, and we'll have it detect the packet driver. And it's been found on interrupt 60. Continuing on, we're going to configure boot P or DHCP. And we'll just kind of push through this email setup wizard for good measure, though I'm not going to set up an email address, though you could. All right, I think that's far enough. Let's see if we can browse the web. Good old google.com. No network interface. Tell you what, for good measure, let's restart Arachne. So we're gonna do an alt X to exit. All right, now let's see if we can go to Google. There we are, folks. We are browsing the web in MS-DOS. Yeah, I've seen that in a couple of cases where after you do your initial installation, you have to do a quick restart. Isn't it lovely? Isn't it impressive that Google works in this web browser? <laughs> I think this is great. So let's ask Google what's, what is 4 plus 4 and see what it says. And lo and behold, 4 plus 4 is 8. So we've all learned something today. Now, and it also gives us some other search results, which is kind of cool. Now, it's just a matter of time before this web browser uh, crashes and dies. So you can see we do have a fair amount of DOS memory available, which is good. We could try to go to some other websites. Uh, I would say that any sort of a modern website is probably not going to load, uh, but you could certainly give it a try. I think somewhere there's a way to, if we do an F3, I think we can go directly to a URL as opposed to clearing that. It'll clear it for us. So where can we go? Uh, I don't know. Uh, CNN.com? I don't think it's going to work, folks, but let's give it a shot. You can see here down at the bottom, uh, the information it's loading, and it's actually pulling in a bunch of cookies, so it's really trying. Uh, but this may be just a little bit too much for this to handle, <laughs> and it may end in failure, but it's worth a try anyway. So being a DOS application, we don't have all the benefits of, uh, of, of everything that you would otherwise see. But nonetheless, what we can do at this point is disconnect our video, Switch on over to our display here, and we can now pick up and go and do some wireless web browsing from wherever we'd like in the house. <laughs> How about that? So with that, I think I'm going to uh, leave it here. Uh, we could sit and wait for CNN to load, but I think we have probably better things to do. Uh, as always, I appreciate you tuning in and watching. Feel free to leave comments below, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.